we will get started this evening. If you're working on the VM, there's actually a link along the launch bar there on the left for Emacs. Um, Emacs has two modes. I'm going to launch it via the terminal. And shout out if at any point things get, can people read that? Okay. Um, so if you go into the terminal and you just type in the command Emacs, this will by default launch the Emacs text editor. So what is a text editor? It's something that edits text. It's pretty straightforward. Emacs is a pretty full feature text editor. Some of these other ones we're going over tonight have various level of features. Some of you may have used IDEs, integrated development environments in the past. These are things like Visual Studio Eclipse. They basically take an editor and roll it up with a bunch of other tools as well. Um, Emacs is more of a peer editor. Uh, it's not really, it gives you a lot of things that you can also do in an IDE, but unlike an IDE, it's not gonna sit there and hold your hand while you're compiling code. It's there primarily to help you write code. Uh, it, it doesn't worry so much about the compiling side of things, the running side of things, the organizing your files side of things. That's all kind of left on you. That said, it's a very powerful editor and a lot of people really like it, including myself. So. With these editors tonight, I'm going to show you Emacs. You may not like Emacs. That's OK. Uh, most people have one editor that they learn, and they stick with it for the rest of their life, and they get into bar fights with people when they use a different editor. So I'm teaching Emacs. Emacs is the best editor, but there are other options. Um, Vim is probably the next most popular. Things like Sublime are also popular. And then there are those humans that do like to use IDEs, things like Visual Studio or Eclipse. So, Take Emacs away from this tonight and some of the other stuff in the general gist. If this isn't your thing, it's okay. We don't have to be friends. Um, but there are other options out there as well. So if I go to launch Emacs in the terminal, and this is how it'll work on the VM, uh, if you have the default Emacs install, when you type in Emacs and hit it, it actually launches Emacs in what we call windowed mode. Um, so it launches a separate window. I'm no longer sitting on the terminal. I have a white background. And I can use my mouse to click on things. Using your mouse to click on things is lame. So this is not what we're going to be uh, using tonight. All of the hotkeys and everything I'm teaching you tonight work just fine in here. This version of Emacs, you can do everything I'm gonna do and you can use your mouse. Uh, but I'm gonna teach the version where you don't use your mouse because if you really get into Emacs, that's the way you do it. It turns out keystrokes are a lot faster than reaching over your mouse to try to do something when you're in the middle of touch typing a big program or something like that. So. You're welcome to use this version of Emacs. You can use it tonight. Everything I show you will work just fine in this. Um, but I'm actually going to use the non-windowed version, which is what I normally use. So to get to the non-windowed version, if you don't have it installed by default, uh, you can do Emacs-NW, the NW standing for non-window. And this will go ahead and launch a version of Emacs that just lives on the tutorial. Uh, I'm going to shrink my screen a little bit because it looks prettier when I do it. So you should get a screen that looks something like this. Can people still see okay? I lost anyone yet. Um, so when you run it in non-window mode, you'll get a screen that looks something like this. It has this menu bar along the top, but clicking does nothing. Uh, and stuff maybe randomly highlights some text in my terminal. Um, you did not get it. Oh, did you run it with the dash in W? And are you in OS X? No, I mean, I'm using uh, VirtualBox. So kind of what does it do? Nothing? Or it just brings up the same window again? There are two lines of. OK. OK, so it's. So it's. Huh? You for PowerPoint? Yeah. No, I don't know what's on this one. Okay. This looks? I don't know. So it's e one dash. It wasn't the front work. This is this. Yeah, this is the front. So, um, yeah. So it should work if you do e Is anyone else stuck? My screen just looks different, but it's e Um. Yeah, so that's correct. You just have your terminal color set to Well, Yeah. Yeah, so they may not pop up with that same screen. But it's not still so If you get this, yeah, if you get that, that's fine. Okay, 
So, Emacs in the non-window mode, if you want it to do this by default, so you don't have to worry about typing that in W, catch me after this, I can show you how to make it that the default mode. But for now, uh, if you launch with the dash NW command, you should either get this screen, you may get a slightly different screen that has a thing at the top saying this buffer is for notes, something along that line. That's fine as well. So we're in Emacs, this is the default start screen, but there's nothing special about it, and in fact, we're pretty much gonna ignore it. Um, most of the commands in Emacs are based off sequences of hotkeys. If you look at this probably somewhat intimidating cheat sheet that I gave to all of you, you'll notice that the key combinations are written in a couple of different ways. Um, they're written as C-X, so anytime you see something of the form C-some letter, this means hold down control and press that letter. So C-X is a pretty common one, that means control X. The other thing you're going to see is M, M dash something. M stands for meta. Uh, that doesn't actually mean anything to us anymore. This is the alt key on modern computers. So anything with this corresponds to hold down alt and press some key. Anything with the C stands for hold down control and press some key. Uh, if you have two things in a row, it generally means do the first thing and then do the second thing. So if you have something that like says, C dash X and then says C dash C. This means do control X and then control C to execute that command. So I don't even know all the commands on this sheet. You tend to want to keep one of these handy because there's always an obscure command you don't have memorized. What we're going to go over tonight is the commands that you will memorize, the stuff that is the bulk of, uh, of what you do in Emacs. So, Many of you probably have an Emacs window open now. The logical next question is, how do you exit Emacs? This is an important thing to know. Uh, so, to exit Emacs, it's a sequence of two keys. It's probably on this cheat sheet somewhere, although I honestly don't know where it is. Um, the command to exit is Control X followed by Control C. So if I do Control X followed by Control C, it should move me back to the main screen. Um, if you guys watch when I do that, if you can look at the bottom of the screen here, as soon as I hit Control X, the bottom of the screen shows me the last key I keyed in. So it's saying I just entered a Control X and it's waiting for something else. Control X by itself doesn't really do anything. It's like the starter key for a lot of these commands. So Control X, and then as I do Control C, it immediately exits. If I did a command that didn't exit, you actually would have seen the Control C show up there as well. So if you're confused about where you are or what you just entered, you can always look down at the bottom and it should tell you where you are in some command sequence. People lost here. So we can start at Exit Emacs, making progress. It's about what I can do in Ben. Um, okay, 